Three eight five one, turn right heading one eight zero. Two one four, Papa, turn right two four five. Report localizer established. Hey everyone, welcome back to DJ's Aviation, and now the fifth episode to my 2018 Aviation Recap series. If you're just joining up with the series now, what the videos do is shed light on developments within the aviation industry for a specific month of this year. Today's focus is going to be on June. So what I'll be doing is covering stories that came up in June of 2018. This is why some stories A, might be out of date, and B, have a new update to them already. As we move forward through the months, you'll hear certain stories develop and grow. Today, the focus will be on Lufthansa, Airbus, London Heathrow, and more. In June, Lufthansa unveiled a number of alternate livery designs, which could have easily become the new Lufthansa livery. The decision to unveil these four designs was labelled as odd, but also welcomed by many, as we usually see airlines stick with one scheme and not show the other candidates. This is unless it is a special livery competition, like what we saw for the ANA Airbus A380. The unveiling of these concept liveries also saw a number of people continue to question whether Lufthansa were truly happy with their new livery, and or whether they were trying to validate their selection. Either way, the other designs were still extremely elegant, with some incorporating the yellow, which has currently gone missing from their new livery. June saw Singapore Airlines announce that they would reintroduce the world's longest commercial flight from Singapore to New York in October. The flight would be operated by the Airbus A350 ULR, an aircraft which according to Airbus is going to change the game for air travel and also long distance travel like that of the Singapore Changi to Newark service. Flights launched on the 11th of October and the aircraft flew into Newark, an airport which is a heavy United Airlines presence. Of course, a fellow member of the Star Alliance which Singapore Airlines is indeed a part of. The route will initially be a three times weekly service until it eventually moves to daily from the 18th of October when another A350-900 ULR is delivered to the airline. The Singapore Airlines CEO said, Singapore Airlines has always taken pride in pushing the boundaries to provide the best possible travel convenience for our customers, and we are pleased to be leading the way with these new non-stop flights using the latest technology ultra-long-range Airbus A350-900 ULR, adding, the flights will offer our customers the fastest way to travel between the two cities, in great comfort, together with Singapore Airlines' legendary service, and will help boost connectivity to and through the Singapore hub. With the announcement of the new A350-900 ULR, Airbus pounced on the ultra-long-haul market, noting that they were eyeing adding an A350-1000 ULR to their portfolio, a variant which would seemingly suit Project Sunrise with Qantas absolutely perfectly. Eric Schultz, while at the International Air Transport Association annual greeting, said, The 900 and 1000 are very similar airplanes. They just have the capacity changes. So whatever we have been able to do on the 900 ULR, we can clearly deploy on the Dash 1000 ULR as well. Adding, We are looking at both options. I'm convinced that we have at least one, if not two products that could do the mission. The A350-1000 ULR would share a very similar range to what is found on the A350-900 ULR. However, the main feature it'd have over the A350-900 ULR is its capacity, which would aid airlines like Qantas, who have specifically requested capacity for their Project Sunrise flights to the likes of New York and London Heathrow. Boeing's NMA, dubbed to be the 797, received a few updates in June as well, with Boeing officials and other sources noting that we could see a launch of the aircraft in 2020. The launch in 2020 would be for airlines to order the aircraft and for Boeing to also introduce their specifications and more. Boeing is still eyeing an introduction with customers for the mid to late 2020s, a time when airlines will be saying goodbye to their final 767s, 757s and potentially A330COs. You may recall that earlier in 2018, it was reported that Air New Zealand were eyeing a replacement for their 777-200 aircraft in the coming years. But we're actually looking to make an order as early as 2019. In June, the A350-900 made a visit to Wellington Airport to complete short runway testing. The CEO of Wellington Airport said, We are pleased to welcome one of the world's newest and most innovative aircraft to Wellington. The, the trial will show the maximum performance of our runway and what it can deliver for Airbus aircraft. Adding, the visit is a part of Airbus's continuous program of performance tests where the company evaluates aircraft in specific operating environments and conditions. 
Wellington Airport has had rumours surrounding a runway extension for years now, but it was confirmed that the testing wasn't for this, leading some to believe that this could be for Air New Zealand, who were in fact going to take data from Airbus to understand whether, if they ordered the A350-900, they could fly it out of airports like Wellington rather than just Auckland. The CEO finally commented saying there is a worldwide trend among airlines to use direct, otherwise known as point-to-point, fuel-efficient aircraft with seating capacity matched to demand. This enables efficient, sustainable routes to be opened up to cater for the ever-growing demands in air travel, especially in the Asia-Pacific region, which is one of the fastest growing in the world. In June, the cabinet in the United Kingdom finally approved the new runway plan for London's Heathrow, which will see the major airport get a third runway and a much-needed expansion. Heathrow has quickly grown through the years, and now slots are harder than ever to come by, with the skies packed with aircraft in holding patterns, terminals full of passengers, and the gates always full. Ministers described the moment the runway passed as a historic moment for travel within the UK. In addition to the clearing of the announcement, the Transport Secretary announced that there would be a £2.6 billion sent out in compensation to those residents who will now be impacted by the noise and also their houses being destroyed due to the expansion. While the majority of the public's response was positive, some were quite upset knowing that communities would be torn apart due to this. I think while we all value expansions of airports, we can certainly come to understand this perspective as no one would like to see their home and or community destroyed. In June, we were met with the news that two very iconic aircraft would be headed to the scrap just a decade after they were built, that being the first two Airbus A380s, which were flying with Singapore Airlines before the airline decided not to renew its lease and send them back to their lessers. Since then, the lesser, Dr. Peters, a German investment fund, has been trying to sell the aircraft onto the likes of Iran Air, British Airways and even High Fly. However, this has been to no avail and the aircraft will now be sold for parts over the coming years. The CEO of Dr. Peters said, Given the size of the investment, some airlines weren't sure about the future plans for the aircraft. Adding, that's a factor that has complicated negotiations. He went on to then say, when the A380 launched a decade ago, there was a real hype surrounding the aircraft. And to this day, I've yet to meet a passenger who would say it's a bad aircraft. Maybe things will turn around for the second-hand market in a few years. In a quick-fire story, we also witnessed a Lufthansa Airbus A340 get badly damaged in a tug fire, which left the A340 looking unrecognisable, with its usual clean livery turned into a destroyed, burnt front. Just a month after Etihad Airways said they'd be potentially looking to cancel some wide-body orders, the airline further said that they'd be looking to defer or cancel some of their 777X jets, specifically. The deal, which is worth billions to Boeing, has cost Etihad a lot, and considering their current financial state, deferring some of the orders would definitely aid the airline in its current financial strain. Of course, the impact it would have on Boeing, though, would be great, who would lose a number of orders, and of course, more importantly, delivery slots. In a final bit of news, Boeing unveiled their hypersonic jet concept. This hypersonic jet could be applied to the commercial side of aviation and also the military side, as stated by Boeing themselves. The senior technical fellow and chief scientist of of hypersonics said, We're excited about the potential of hypersonic technology to connect the world faster than ever before, adding, Boeing is building upon a foundation of six decades of work designing, developing, and flying experimental hypersonic vehicles, which makes us the right company to lead the effort in bringing this technology to the market market in the future. Engineers are currently working on other designs and this concept is just one of many the teams come up with. If all went according to plan, it would actually be possible to get this hypersonic jet airborne in 20 to 30 years time. While interesting, a number of people quickly pushed aside the unveiling, saying we would never actually get the opportunity to see it fly, as simply it isn't realistic. What do you think? Let me know down below. And that is June for you all. I hope you all did enjoy another recap. If you have a favorite story, whether that be the A350-1000 ULR, maybe it's the A350-900 ULR being put on the Singapore to Newark service, let me know down in the comment section below. If I've said anything else interesting in this video, 
or something that you would like to weigh in on, whether that be maybe the Wellington Airport expansion, also feel free to let me know. If you are new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button, and if you enjoyed the video, why not drop it a like as well. I will be returning with more monthly recaps in the coming days. If you didn't know, I am currently on a break, so I'm not going to be active in the comments. These are all pre-prepared videos. Anyway, I do very much look forward to you all joining me either in the next video or the next monthly recap.